Let's talk now about the extended Bacchus Nauer form, EBNF in short. So what is EBNF? It's a meta syntax notation. So meta means beyond syntax. Well, it's beyond the syntax notation. It's in fact a language to specify syntax. There are many variants of the Bacchus Nauer form. All of them are summarized as an extended Bacchus Nauer form. We use here a simplified variant. Um, what we will see later at the end of the term is that EBNF is in fact a, a so-called grammar that is typically used to define a language, like a programming language. And all texts that are part of this language that can be that are producible by such a grammar. Okay, let's have a look at the elements of the EBNF. Well, we have terminal symbols, which is the actual text, like one or number. And I put here some quotes. Sometimes you leave the quotes alone if you understand what it means. Then we have non-terminals that are variables that define production rules. So I have, can have, for example, a rule that says one is equivalent to this terminal symbol one. And I have finally production rules that define what a non-terminal can produce. And I can combine those rules together. So I can have the pipe symbol, which is means or. It means either the left rule of it or the right rule must be applied. I have options that can be zero or one time repeated. I have a repetition, which means I can repeat it as often as I like. And I have sometimes grouping, which is the normal brackets. I can also insert comments with the slash star. That means they, these are just document rules. They are not part of the actual language specification. Let's have some examples. We know a number is, we know that a number is either zero or one to nine, so the, the decimal one to nine, and then followed by any number of digits again, right? So um, let me clarify this briefly here in another little box that we can get a better understanding what this means. What, so the first rule means, um, so we know number 10 is a number, number zero is a number, but it consists of two, 10 consists of two digits, right? Li like the number, like this, consists of many digits. You do, you do not have a proper digit, uh, proper number that start, is like zero, zero, one, right? This would be always one, okay? So that wouldn't be a proper number. For that reason, we have basically this first rule. The first rule says, so number is either zero or it is digit one, which means it's a number, which starts, which we define in a second, and then any number of digits. Okay. So what is what is digit one? Well, digit one is one or two or three and so on up to number nine, right? So with this rule alone digit one, you can produce any number between one to nine, but you cannot produce the number zero. Okay. The reason why I we want to do this is because we know that the number zero, zero, one does not exist. Here we can, we know that the numbers as either be zero or the number starts with any of those numbers, one to nine, and then is followed by any digit. Okay. What is digit? Well, we could, we can probably say digit is um, number one, uh, zero, one, and so on, up to number nine, right? That is any possible digit. So with these three rules, we can we are able to produce any number between zero and, well, however big you like it, right? Infinity, basically. Okay, that, so that's this. Um, okay, we discussed this. Um, Right, so for any number that we have, we can now write down how it is produced. So we can write the production rules. So for example, the number 120 is an element of our language that we find by those three rules that is produced as follows. First, you go from a number to the right rule, digit one, or and any number of digit repetitions, right? Then you we take digit one and replace it with one, because it's the number we want to figure out is 120. 
Next, we change this repetition. We can, we can repeat as often as we like. So we repeat it one time. In this case, we change the rule to be, we apply this rule, digit becomes zero or digit one. So we apply the rule digit one. And then we apply the digit one rule where we can transform into two. So therewith we, we have come from number to digit one, any re repetitions of digit, to one, any repetitions of digit, to the rule one digit one, any repeats of digit, to one, tw one two. So we have basically 12 here already. And then any number of repeats from digit rule. Now we apply only one repeat and we transform digit to zero. And therewith we got number 120. So this is a production now. And we applied kind of the rules that we, we wanted to do here in this case on the leftmost possibility. And like I said, you can try it with any number that you like, that is positive, of course. Um, and you will be able to produce this number by applying a sequence of those steps. I think it's very good if you would try that now, make a little break, you have a couple of minutes and try, uh, take, pick a number that is like two to three digits long and try to make, apply those production rules. So you can think of strings that cannot be produced by, by this grammar or by our EBNF formulation. And this, these are not part of the language. For example, the string one A two, this is clearly not a number. And you know, our three rules here, they won't recognize it. Okay. So what we've seen is that with the EBNF, we can s basically specify valid languages that we like make sense. Okay. So the EBNF is a way to specify syntax. So now you can think of more complicated expressions and that you can form using EBNF. For example, we can say we want to describe mathematical expressions. And let me give you an example of a mathematical expression. For example, the two plus two times four, right? This is a valid expression, right? Um, this isn't a valid expression because there is clearly the number missing between our operands, right? So this little, um, express this little specification of EBNF here allows you to exactly to do that. So we can say an expression is a number plus another number, or it is a number in brackets, you know, right? Plus another number in brackets. Or it is a number times a number, or it is a number in brackets times a number in brackets, or it is just a number. Okay. So we used, as you can see, we used again, what we have defined here, a single number definition, and now made it possible to define what a mathematical expression is. That is a really convenient way to specify syntax and also have the computer do this automatically, as you will see. Okay. Sometimes people add, um, you know, these uh, brackets around non-terminals and use it uppercase. So I could say that a rule looks like this rule is something or something and rule. And then now it's clear to me that something and rule, they are both non-terminal production rules that I need to apply. Yeah. All right. So now let's think now about group work one, which I think you, you do alone for now, but you can discuss on our channel in teams. So write down the EBNF formulation of the languages of the language of all palindromes. So what is a palindrome? Well, a word that can be read forward and backwards at the same time with the same character. So the word Hannah is if you read it forward, it is Hannah, but if you read it backwards, it's also Hannah and gig as well, right? Gig and gig is always the same. Um, well, if you find this too difficult, try, make an attempt to write down the rules. 
or check our number example. Here was our number example that we had over here. And now pause the video and try to resolve this matter. It's really a good idea to, to test on a couple of those examples um, how you would uh, basically apply those production rules. Good. Here is now our solution, which in fact lo doesn't look that hard, but it's really difficult to get those simple solutions if you've never done it before. So a palindrome here, this is our non-terminal, is for example you take A, the character A, and then you apply the palindrome rule again, and then you take again A. So now if we do this, we can produce a string that starts with A and ends with A. So basically, if you read it from this side and you read it from that side, well, it, is, it, it is identical for that character. And as long as we insert another palindrome here that is a bit shorter in it, well, we will the so whole solution will be have a palindrome again. Right? So we do this for every character, so A up to Z. And then we have also rules A to Z without using the non-terminal pal again. So let's try it to generate the word kick. So we can use pal and from pal we can apply the rule for g. Well, the rule for g says take g, then take pal and then take g again. Well, that's doable, right? And then we transform pal using one of these rules here, just taking the i and therewith we get kick. Let me create yet another example because you may find this a bit confusing and hard to understand possibly. Okay, so remember now the key idea was, so we, we take our rule pal and let's take, make it a bit simpler. Like I said, I can actually write this easier to understand sometimes using the brackets and I make the example slightly easier. Okay, so let's say we have just two rules. I have a pal can be a pal a or a and it can be b pal b or b okay now let's have a let's try to understand what's going on here so basically we, again we say uh, if we take a smaller a shorter palindrome so that can be read from left to right and then we add on both ends a well it has to be a palindrome again if we have if a palindrome is of course just taking a single character like a and b Okay, so now let's take a word like A, B, B, A. Can we produce this? This is certainly is a palindrome because A, B, B, A is the same as A, B, B, A. Right? So this is a palindrome because it is, well, we, our rules, like I said, they should be able to produce it. Let's try it out. So we have pal and we can, tr we can apply now this first rule. So we go to A, pal, A. And now we, go, we, we apply this rule here, b, so we have a, b, and then pal, b, and then a, right? So we replace the left hand side, this non-terminal, again with one of the rules that we found here in our example. And here you see the problem now. Well. Basically, we would have to insert um, another, yet another character like A or B. So what we miss here is basically the empty character. Uh, and then I can, in the last step now, apply this rule. So I can apply in the last step. The empty character is a palindrome by default, okay? So I apply this, and so I get A, B. I apply this rule. I get the empty character, and I, I discard it. And that's why how I get to A, B, B, A, right? And you can also see now, if I would have to produce just, that is under production of this here, if I just have the production of A, B, A, right? Uh, it would look quite similar at the beginning. I use, apply this rule, I produce A and another polyndrome in A. And the next step though, I would basically replace, use this rule here, palindrome gets replaced with B. So I would directly get this as an outcome. Okay.